Hello everyone, my name is Josiah Clement and today we'll be talking about home servers. So this is the introduction to a whole series that we'll be covering. So in the series each video will cover every single step that we'll take. So one video will cover installing the server, uh, another video will cover the concepts of dynamic DNS and how we get that sorted out. And so well, today we'll just cover the basics of it. So what is a home server? So we can basically sum it up by just saying we'll run any type of web server on a smaller scale so we don't have scaling opportunities but then again it's ours, we can have it at home, we can access it locally um, and put files on it locally um, but we can also access it from the web. We can make it private in the fact that no one else actually knows that we have it so don't tell anyone about it and you, you're the only one that can actually access it so the benefits are quite good there. Um, so what we're going to use it for is you can use it as a web server, as a local file server. We could back up all your files from your computers at home onto it. Media server, obviously, email server, and the list really goes on. Um, anything can be run at home. Basically, the, the software is free and it's there for you. So. The reason why I picked it up was because I was losing my flash drives all the time and I had important information on there for work, programming work and also um, for university stuff as well. So I didn't want to lose them continuously and you lost data that you couldn't get back. So if I had it backed up onto a home server that I can access from anywhere and I had a good back backup scheme, then I could access it anywhere. doesn't even matter if I have my USB on me or not. Um, and that just made sense to me and it was just quick and easy to set up so here it is for you guys and um, also it just helps to try something new and that's quite fun as well okay so how do we do it let's determine why you'll actually need a home server so once you know look I want to just have a web server then you don't really need that much space but if you need a file server you might need a few terabytes um, and also with another backup scheme so you might want to back that up every month um, I would say you know three to five years replace your hard drives um, and have a good backup scheme in place because they are mechanical if you can afford solid state drives at you know a ridiculous price that they are then go ahead for it okay you can use old hardware and new hardware if you have a new hardware get a dual core atom machine um, they're fantastic really low power consumption but you know decent enough to be able to do anything um, your software we're going to use uh, we're going to use uh, Ubuntu server on it um, and then we're going to set up dynamic DNS and configure the final touches on top of it as well. So my personal server, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a web server, Apache, MySQL um, and PHP on there as well. Um, NFS and Samba, that's for file sharing between Windows and your Macs and your Linux computers. Webmin to configure the server, uh, that's fantastic, and um, EXT Plora, which it's like a my own personal online FDP. Uh, it uses JavaScript, so um, nice and easy. Looks great. And iOS web-based operating system runs in JavaScript as well. So light, nice and light, and has all the applications you actually need on it. Now, hardware requ requirements for you cl for um, the Ubuntu server is a 300 megahertz processor, 128 megabytes of RAM, and a gig of disk space. Now, obviously, that's not much. You might not want to use a really super old computer because it's just hunky and it just probably sounds sick and takes so much power. I, I chose to use a laptop, an older laptop, so 1.6 gig um, Centrino processor, 100 gig hard, 160 gig hard drive and a gig of RAM, so that's grunty enough to run what I need it to run and I haven't had problems so far. So operating system, Ubuntu server, I recommend it because it's really straightforward you install it and it's it's there you know you've got all your applications they've called it LA um, they call it LAMP and that's Linux, Apache, um, Apache, PHP and MySQL all in there and every other thing and it's you use AppGet installed to install any, app, anything else that you want on top of it so really nice and easy easiest, soft, easiest server to actually use um, the cons are there's no graphical interface, but um, it uses command lines, but you can install later on. And so, you know, small con, but big rewards on that one. Now, just finally, we'll touch on the dynamic DNS. 
we can obviously view the local computers at home, but to be able to enable it to be viewed externally from the web, the web can only see one computer, let's name it a computer, and that's actually the router. And the router has an IP address assigned to it when you log on to your ISP. Now, the IS if you switch off your router, you'll get a new new um, IP address. Now, what happens is that we don't really always want to remember the IP address, may it be 121.98.64.32 maybe. We don't want to remember that all the time, especially if it changes. What we need to have is like a host, like a domain name or a host name, like mine is clement.zepto.org. And we use a service called noisp.com. It's free. Um, you can use up to five different host names. And we actually manage it by updating our logical IP address um, every time we update it, every time it needs to be updated. Or we run a small little program on our computer that runs in the background that checks if it needs to be updated and it updates it automatically. Now what happens with this is that if, for instance, someone wants to go into my um, web server, they go type in their address into their web browser and it will first go to their closest DNS server and go, hey look, I'm looking for this clement.zepto.org and I'll search around. And nosp.com's job is to update um, my host name to direct back to me, back to that specific IP address that is updated. So there are DNS service itself and they update the DNS servers around the world um, telling them where to go. So hopefully that clarifies a few things and makes you want to install yourself a home server. So let's get cracking on it. So please subscribe to my videos and um, once again it's um, Josiah Clement signing off. Thank you.